front row. Church, security snatchers. What are they? Security snatchers. They're people, places, and things that can essentially rob us of our true security, which is found in Jesus. So here's the concept. Jesus plus nothing equals everything. Things that can separate us from their true security that only Jesus can provide. So let me, let me be honest with you guys. I love being a youth pastor. That's, this is probably one of the greatest things anyone could ever want in life. Like, it, I find so much joy in this lifestyle. Like, being a youth pastor is just, it's, it is amazing. It's fire. It's awesome. But one thing I've noticed is that I cannot put my security in our teenagers. Stay with me. Stay with me, all right? Stay with me, okay? I love helping your teens grow closer to Jesus. That's what God wants over my life, and I love it. But I, I, I can't trust them, and I can't put my faith. They, they have let me down too many times. Exhibit A. I took the teens out to the beach about last year, about a year ago, and they were trying to figure out how old I was. Now, I wasn't going to tell them how old I was. I was going to let them guess. So at this point, one of the teens gets tired of guessing, and he goes, bruh, you're just old. You get taxpayer energy. <laughs> taxpayer energy? Okay. Another one. Addie Belcher, daughter of Dave and Lindsay Belcher, decided to text me before a youth group and say, when I get the youth group, we're going to fight. <laughs> going to fight the youth pastor? Okay. Jade Middleton, granddaughter of Mayor and Scott Wood said to me, oh no, your outfit just ain't it today. <laughs> okay. Joshua Edwards, son of Heather and Doug Edwards, sees me every Wednesday and goes, you're just an old grandma. <laughs> and this, this one I love. Callie Ryan, daughter of John Ryan, Susie Ryan, she decides to tell me one day, there's this kid in my gym class that looks just like you, acts like you, and talks like you, and everything. I thought it was you until I looked down and I realized that his legs weren't skinny like yours. <laughs> I cannot put my security in these teenagers. I'm getting told I'm getting beat up. I'm getting told that I skipped leg day. I'm getting told that my, my fashion ain't good. I'm getting told these things. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but hey, don't people let us down sometimes? Don't, don't humans let us down sometimes? You know, in our ever-changing world, it is easy to become filled with uncertainty and worry. Many people crave security along with the peace and stability that comes with it. Sometimes people may feel like they need to take control to ensure that everything in life is good. Oftentimes when they do this, however, they try to find security in the wrong places. Let's pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, I just thank you for the ministry that you laid down at Gloucester County Community Church. God, I thank you for our shepherd, Pastor Blake. Pray for him and the kids and Lisa as they're traveling and as they're in Vegas. God, anoint his word today as he preaches to Southern Hills. God, God, I thank you for what you're doing in his life. God, I thank you for the church. I thank you for the goodness that you've done us. God, I thank you for our founder and his family, God. And God, today I pray that you speak through me. God, allow the message to touch our hearts and to bring peace. And I pray that you're just, your joy and your, and your abundance of blessings just comes through this house, God, in your precious name. Amen. Amen. You see, one thing that the Bible does is that it gives us practical ways of how to live life smoothly. See, now, a lot of times that can be portrayed as easier said than done. But the thing is, as God's people, we get so caught up in life that we forget who is in control. And oftentimes, as humans, we tend to put our security and trust in everything but Jesus. And then sometimes, when we hit rock bottom, then we put our security in Jesus. You know, there's this thing called natural programming. Now, I don't, I don't know who's a, who's a medical person in here, so don't get mad at me. This is, just, this is my terminology, okay? All right, natural programming. What's that? Everyone in this room is blinking right now because if you stop blinking, we're going to have some problems. Everyone in this room is breathing right now, I hope. All right, because if we stop breathing, 
we're going to have a problem. These are natural body functions that the body does unwillingly to keep our, ourselves good, healthy, well, right? And sometimes if we're, if we're made aware of these things, then we're doing them willingly, right? So if I tell you right now you're blinking, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I am blinking, all right? You see, a lot of times when we're dealing with people, we tend to put our security in them and them alone. So today we're going to talk about three things that take our security away from Jesus. It's people, places, and things. The first one is people. Now, I'm not sure who may, who may know in the building, but I'm, I am newly engaged. Okay, I am newly engaged. All right. I, I met this young lady back when I was 16 years old in high school. And I was like, that's going to be my wife one day. And she's sitting in the front row. She's so beautiful. And let me say this right now. I have never let her down. <laughs> but she has always let me down. No, I'm just kidding. She is amazing. I mean, I, I haven't. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. I mean, she is amazing. I have met the most pleasant young lady in the world. She's beautiful and she loves God and everything's great. Yeah. I love you, Jada. <laughs> how, many of, how many of us in here have our person? A best friend, a spouse, a girlfriend, boyfriend. How many of us in here have a person? I think everyone should raise their hand, right? We all have a person that we can rely on, something that we trust in, right? It happens quite often that we cling to people and sometimes unwillingly we put all of our trust and security in these people. But the reality is, if we trust people 100%, we put all our security in people 100% and don't put our security in Jesus, eventually those people will let us down and vice versa. If Jada puts all her security in me, eventually I'm going to let her down. If I put all my security in her, eventually I'm going to let her down because only God can provide the utmost security. For example, in, in Jeremiah 17, 5, it says this. I love this. It says, the Lord says, those who trust in human beings are under my curse. They depend on human strength. Their hearts turn away from me. Hmm. So I'm not saying that you can't trust in people. I'm not saying you can't have a close relationship with someone where they can provide you peace and comfort. What I'm saying is, if you look at them and they begin to take the position of Jesus in your life, then we're doing something wrong. You know, I love, I love that Jeremiah says their hearts turn away from me because it's because our natural programming, sometimes willingly and unwillingly, it begins to rely so much on the person, we forget who can ultimately fix our issues. You see, human beings, we can only do but so much. See, a lot of times as humans, we want that comfortability in the temporary, but we forget that God brings the security eternally. You know, I love what Psalm 62 says. It says, surely ordinary people are only a breath. Important people are not what they seem to be. If they were weighed on a scale, they wouldn't amount to anything. <laughs> Together, they are only a breath. You know, when I was a kid, right, and everyone can probably relate to this. When you skinned your knee, you fell, you skinned your knee, you ran to mommy, you ran to daddy, said, I need help. Look what I did to myself. So what does mommy or daddy do? They kiss it and they, and they, and they patch it up, right? Because they provide the comfort in the moment. They provide the, the security in the moment. They help you feel secure and safe in the moment because they can patch up your boo-boo. But can I ask you a question? Did mommy and daddy heal the wound? See, they provided security temporarily, but Jesus brought the security eternally because that scar is patched up. Jesus is the only one that can provide the utmost security. <laughs> Psalm 62, verse 6, it says, It is surely true that he is my rock and the God who saves me. He is like a fort to me, so I will always be secure. Wow. Security comes from Jesus and Jesus alone. See, once again, I'm not saying you can't trust in people. I'm not saying you can't have a best friend. I'm not saying you can't rely on your spouse. What I'm saying is those are good things, but they're not the God things. God provides everything. 
You know, speaking of people, I love grandma's house. Grandma's house. Who remembers grandma's house? You know, when you walk in grandma's house, right? You know, it smells good. It feels good. And for some odd reason, I like, like, why are grandmas always up to something new? They always see some on TV. You know, I just bought something new. I got stuff new. Come on, who's the grandma in the building? I know y'all are always up to something new, right? I know I love going to my grandma's house, you know, because she always had some food cooking maybe, or it was always some music going. It just smelled good. It felt good. But grandma's always embraced you with that love. They always made sure that you were going to be safe while you were in their vicinity. Now, I don't know if that might have been the same for you. I know some of, some of you may have had the grandma that has the plastic on all the furniture, and when it's hot outside, it sticks to you. You're like, oh, this is, hey, I can't find security in that. Okay, that's painful, right? <laughs> and then some of it, it may not have been a grandma's house. It may have been a relative, a close friend, whoever. But we found security in those places because of the positivity and the peace that it brought in the moment. We found security in those places because we felt secure in the moment. You know, my grandma at, at her house, she, the moment you walk in, right, there was reminders of Jesus everywhere, right? There's a, there's a verse here. There's a proclamation here. There's, there's some kind of proverb right here. And, and, and even she had, a, she had this plaque that said, with faith, nothing is impossible. Now, for some odd reason, she has that over the toilet in the bathroom. I'm not sure what she's getting at, but she has that. So I, I, just stay with me. I mean, all I know is that when I walk in there, I'm like, I can do this today. <laughs> I, I'm, I am not kidding. Show Hazard is back there. You go in her house. It's in the bathroom. Okay, you can do anything in there. <laughs> but why do we love Grandma's house so much? It's because we feel secure in there. It's because there's so much positivity in there. There's so much peace in there that we feel secure. You know, I love this, this account of Jesus' life in, um, in Matthew. If you turn with me, stay with me in Matthew 14, verse 25. I love this account. It says, surely before dawn, Jesus went out to the disciples. He walked on the lake. They saw him walking on the lake and were terrified. It's a ghost, they said. And they cried out in fear. Right away, Jesus called out to them, be brave. It is I. Do not be afraid. Lord, is it you? Peter asked, if it is, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, Jesus said. So Peter got out of the boat. He walked on the water towards Jesus. But when Peter saw the wind, he was afraid. He began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. And right away, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. Your faith is so small, he said. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those in the boat worshiped Jesus. They said, you really are the son of God. Why does this apply so much to places, right? Right? Because we're talking about places right now. Why, why, why is grandma's house so important? Why does grandma's house make us feel secure, right? Notice there's a difference between Peter and the other disciples. The other disciples stay in the boat. Peter said, this is not enough. My security lies on, the, on, on that water. That's why he said, Jesus, let me come to you. So my question churches are, are some of us still in the boat? Are we on the water walking towards Jesus? See, Jesus is saying, this boat, is, it's going to collapse. Once that wave hits it, it's done. It's, it can provide you security in the moment, but I can bring that security eternally. You see, the boat, it's a great thing. Grandma's house is a great thing. Those are all great things, but they're not the God thing. Amen. They're not the God thing. I love, I love his, let's go back to 29. He said, come, Jesus said. So Peter got out of the boat. He walked on the water towards Jesus. But when Peter saw the wind, he was afraid. He began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. And then right away, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. Your faith is so small. Why did you doubt me? You see, we all know the path of a Christian is not the easy path. But right, what Jesus is saying, listen, don't get distracted by the surroundings around you. Stay focused on me because I'm always going to be there to help you. You see, sometimes when we, we begin to, to put our security in Jesus, right? So we step out of the boat, but then we get a little distracted on the way to Jesus. And Jesus says, don't worry about that. I got you. Why did you doubt me? He said, why did you doubt me? Notice at the beginning, I said, sometimes when we rely on Jesus, it's when we hit rock bottom. 
when Peter began to sink, he said, Lord, save me. Lord, help me. Jesus said, why did you doubt me? So church, I, I don't know about you, but I know we've all been there before, right? We, we take that leap of faith. We step out of the boat. We're walking towards Jesus. We're, right, right, we're, we're good right now. And then something crazy happens. And then we're like, all right, okay, wait, hold on, hold on. And then we're back in the boat. The boat is temporary. Jesus is eternal. The boat can only do but so much. So my question to you, church, is are you still in the boat? Are you on the water? See, Peter said, Peter said, that's where I need to be. The other disciples, they were like, yo, we're, 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 we're going, we're, Peter, you can do your own thing. We're going to stay right here. See, a lot of times we fall victim of that peer pressure thing, right? When everyone else is just, they're, they're playing it safe. They're staying right in the safe place. But Jesus says, I need you to get a little reckless for me. I need you to take that leap of faith and know that I always got your back. Know that I always have you. So walk in the water with me and don't sing. But if you begin to sing, I'm going to reach out. I'm going to pull you right back up. Come on. He's the only one that can provide security. So where's your security? Is it? Is it in grandma's house? Is it, is it in your job? Is it in that new boat you just got? Or is it in Jesus and Jesus alone? Like I said, once we get the, the boat's a great thing. Grandma's house is a great thing. Your job is a great thing. But it's not the God thing. Jesus provides the utmost security in all things. Jesus provides the comfort in all things, in all places. You know, Pastor Blake has this analogy. I love, he, I love when he says it. He, he talks about the congregation. He says, I love looking at the congregation. You know why? Because I believe that this is what heaven will look like. Sometimes we have the ability to put God within the place that doesn't have God in it. You know, I, I talked to a, a gentleman after the first service, and he said, I love what you said about places. He said, I'm in recovery, and a lot of people that have gone through AA have failed. He said, but when there's AA and there's Jesus within AA, no one can never fail because Jesus is the only one that can provide security. <laughs> Bring God into your places. You're in the place of comfortability. You're in the place of security because God placed you there. It's a gift from him. So if we're, if we're putting more security in the place itself, then we got something wrong. We have to put our security in Jesus and Jesus alone. You know, I love what Psalm 62 verse 2 says. It says, he is surely true. It is surely true that he is my rock. He is the God who saves me. He is like a fort to me. I will always be secure. Church, where, where's our security at today? Like I said, the grandma's house can only do but so much. Grandma's house is good in the moment. Grandma's house is good right here. But it's Jesus' house that matters. It's security that Jesus provides that matters. You know, in the midst of us getting caught up in places sometimes, we, we began sometimes to get caught up in the, the, uh, the objects in the places, right? So the first thing, we talked about people, how, we, how we, sometimes we put our security in people, and we just talked about how we put our security in, in places. So let's talk about putting our security in, in things, our wealth, our materialism. The things that we buy, the things that make us feel good, right? How many of us in here uh, go stress shopping? Oh, I go stress shopping all the time. You know, God created something, and it's probably one of the best creations since man. All right? I walk in the Defra Mall, and I look at God's creation, and it has two letters, H and M. That is a beautiful place. 
I'm telling you, when you walk in there, it feels good, right? So we're talking about the place now, right? The place feels good. And now let's talk about the things that's inside of the place that make you feel good, right? So you walk in there, right? Music's bumping. It's all bright. Everyone's like, welcome to H&M. And I'm like, thank you. <laughs> now, I know one time I walked in there and Michael Jackson was playing. Come on, when the fall starts. Don't stop till you get enough. And you just don't stop till you get enough. You know what I mean? You just keep buying, you keep buying. And the thing that I love about H&M is that when you walk in there, right, you stand there and there's these beautiful sign that's in red and white and it says clearance. <laughs> so you walk in there and you say, okay, that shirt looks nice. All right, I'm good. Wait, wait, hold on. Well, that shirt's nice too. That, that one's three dollars. That one's five bucks. You keep keep grabbing shirts. I ain't spending that much money. Come on, it's clearing. This is the clearance rack. Keep getting, keep grabbing, keep grabbing. Now you go to now you go to the to the cashier to check out. Cashier's like, all right, your total is two hundred and thirty dollars. All right, okay, this is clearance, right? So you sometimes we get so caught up in in finding the security and the and the materialistic things. Sometimes we get so caught up in finding the security and the things that make us feel good in the moment, right? So like I said, the first question I asked was, how many of us go stress shopping? So right, if we feel good in that moment, then once we get home, we're back to stressing. Feels good in the moment, but it's not eternal. When you rely on Jesus through your stress, when you rely on Jesus through everything, when you rely on Jesus, period, that's the only security that will truly comfort us. I hope there's an H&M in heaven. I really, really do. I really do. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> you see, H&M is a good thing. H&M is a beautiful place. It's a great thing. Right? Our cars are great things. Our houses are great things. The things that we buy that make us look, our clothes are great things. But they're not the God things. How many of us in here have insurance? How many of us in here have security systems, ring lights, all that, right? We buy these things because they make us feel secure. We buy these things because they make us feel safe in the moment, right? But the only person that can bring the true protection, the only person that can truly make us feel secure, the only person that really brings security is Jesus and Jesus alone. You know, I, I saw this analogy on Facebook. It said, notice in, in when Jesus, when God is, is dealing with um, Noah in the ark, it says that God shut him in. God shut him in. It didn't say the ark shut him in. It didn't say the ark kept him safe. It said God shut him in. So church, in the beginning, I said, sometimes we willingly and we unwillingly put our security in things, and sometimes we forget that we're actually doing it. Sometimes we don't even realize that we're actually doing it. So I'm here to say, sometimes we got to take a step back and reevaluate. Sometimes you have to take a step back and look here, look there, and be like, am I putting my security in this, or am I putting my security in Jesus? I love that analogy, and it goes on to say that, Moses was kept safe. Mo, I'm sorry, not Moses. Noah and his family were kept safe because that God shut them in. Sometimes we have to allow Jesus to shut us in to give us a reality check. Sometimes we have to allow Jesus to shut us in so that we can know that the security comes from him and him alone. I love Job. Job 31. 24. It says, suppose I put my trust in gold. I've said to pure gold, you make me feel secure. And I'm happy because I'm so wealthy. I'm glad because my hands have earned so much. Suppose I worship the sun in all its glory. I bow down to the moon in all its beauty. My heart has been secretly tempted. My hand has thrown kisses to the sun and moon. Then these things would have been sins that should be judged. And I wouldn't have been faithful to God in heaven. I love the verse right here that says, my heart has been secretly tempted. Church, sometimes, a lot of times, it's unwillingly. And sometimes it's willingly. For, for those that may need a little bit of context, Job was one of the most successful people of his time. 
And Satan was like, listen, you take everything away from this man, he's going to curse you. And, God, and, and Job literally says, he's like, my heart has been secretly tempted. And then he goes on to say, go forth. He says, and I wouldn't have been faithful to God. I heard this saying growing up. It said, it doesn't matter how rich you get. It doesn't matter how successful you get. When you when you're face Jesus at the gates, you can't bring any of that with you. Jesus is the only one that can provide security. When I was, when I was analyzing this verse, I was, as I was prepping this message, verse 27 just, just really stuck out to me because, like I said, church, we have to self-evaluate sometimes. My heart has been secretly tempted. My hand has thrown kisses to the sun and moon then these things would have been sins that should be judged and I wouldn't have been faithful to God in heaven. So church, where's our security? Is it in the fancy clothes that we wear? Is it in the sneakers that we, that we just got that just dropped? Is it in the, in the cars and the, the fancy things that we just have? You know, Psalm 62, once again, verse 10, it says, don't trust in money you have taken from others. Don't put false hope in things you have stolen. Even if your riches grow, don't put your trust in them. Jesus is the only one that can provide security. Jesus handles every financial burden. Jesus handles every moral burden. Even when you have those relationships that are dwindling, Jesus is the only one that can truly fix everything. We have everything we have because that he has given it to us. We're, we're joyful. We're thankful for the things that we have because he has given it to us. People are blessings from him. Things are blessings from him. Places are blessings from him. We go on vacation because they're blessings from him. So our security should be in him and him alone. You know, a great illustration, Alexander the Great. You know, he was a conqueror of many kingdoms. You know, at some point of his life, he fell ill, and this led him to his deathbed. So this is what he did. <laughs> I love this. He says, he gathered his generals and told them, I will depart from this world soon. I have three wishes. Please carry them out without fail. The king asked his general to abide by these last wishes. The first one is, the king of Macedon said, my, phys my, my physicians alone must carry my coffin. That was the first one. The second one is, I desire that when my coffin is transported to the grave, the path leading to the graveyard shall display the wealth that I collected. And the third one was, I want both of my hands to hang out of my coffin. Now, the generals agreed to abide by their king's last wishes and asked him why he was doing so. And Alexander said this, he said, I want the world to know these three lessons that I have just learned. The king interpreted his wishes and continued. He said, I want my physicians to carry my coffin because people should realize that no doctor can cure anybody. They are helpless in front of death. This, the, king, um, the king described his second wish. He said, I spent all my life earning riches but cannot take anything with me. Let people know that wealth is nothing but dust. And thirdly, I wish all to know that I came empty-handed in this, into this world and I will go empty-handed. Alexander the Great. In other words, church, Jesus has given us everything. We came here with nothing and we're going to leave with nothing. But Jesus gave everything to us in the moment so we can feel secure in the moment. But the love that he provides, the security that he provides is eternal. Man. I love, I love this last passage, church. I'm going to leave you guys with one more passage. Isaiah 31, verse 1. It says, how terrible it would be for those who go down to Egypt for help. How terrible for those who depend on horses. They trust in how many chariots they have. They trust in how strong their horsemen are. But they don't look to the Holy One of Israel 
they don't ask the Lord for his help. Church, Jesus is saying right here that I'm here and I'm waiting on you. Jesus is saying, it doesn't matter what you're going through. You can keep putting your trust in those things. They're not going to help you. I'm the only one that can help you. You know, as I was dissecting this verse as well, the first part of it stood out to me. It says how terrible it would be for those who go down to Egypt for help. For those who need a little context, Egypt was like, like an arch nemesis to God's people. Am I wrong, PB? Egypt was like a bad place, right? <laughs> but look at the end verse. It says they don't ask the Lord for his help. The ball is in your court. You know, some people may say, you know, Samaj, I've never, I've never felt the security from Jesus that you're talking about. You know, some people say, you know, I, I, ha I have been let down by people. But at the same time, is Jesus, I feel like Jesus is going to let me down. Jesus is saying right here, I'm not going to let you down because if the, if the enemy of Israel, God's people, can have a second chance, then why can't you? He says, they don't look to the Holy One of Israel. They don't ask the Lord for his help. Jesus is waiting. He's waiting for you to say, God, I, I need your security. God, I put my, my trust and my security and, and, and all these other things. I tried to feel secure in my home. I tried to feel secure in my spouse. I tried to feel secure in H&M. But they don't do anything for me eternally. God, I've, I've, I've tried to put my security in all these good things. But I haven't put my security in, in the God things. So if you haven't found that security, you know, we say at the church, we say it's, it's as easy as ABC. We say, A, admit. Admit that you've sinned and your, and your sins separate you from God. Then we say, B, B, believe that God did something for your sin by sending his son Jesus to die on the cross for you to carry the burden of your sins. And then we say, C, commit. Commit your life to him by going out those doors and exhibiting the way he wants you to live. Jesus provides security in all things. Jesus provides comfort in all things. And if you never prayed a prayer like that, if you never made that decision, you've never had that conversation with God to receive that, I ask that you pray with me now and say a prayer like this in your heart. Say, God, forgive me. God, you're good and your grace I don't deserve. God, I'm a sinner and my sins have separated myself from you. So Jesus, I ask that you come into my heart, come into my life, make me new, make me a new creation according to your will. God, I, I, I thank you for what you did on the cross. And I ask that you do a work in my life. Jesus, thank you. In your precious name, amen.